about early years of revision, it was requested that a more differential uh, offer be given uh, of early years of revision and that it be developed by local authorities targeting uh, the most vulnerable children uh, to receive a specific set of outcomes. Uh, it's my belief that uh, what um, uh, officers and the cabinet members have tried to achieve is to come up with uh, a service that works towards achieving those outcomes of the report. I'm wondering if you can describe <coughs> the outcomes and, and do you agree with the aspirations of the report? Well, the fact is, Councillor Abney, I obviously disagree with your assertion that my calling is rather woolly. I don't see how you reach that conclusion. Nevertheless, in terms of the the, um, the objectives of the report, if you like, and, and what it, it looks to achieve, the fact is, much of the report is motherhood and, and, and apple pie. You know, it's one of those phrases that council officers like to use about strategic thinking, about working with partners. But where's the evidence that it actually took place? The fact is, what I believe, Councillor Daphne, is that actions speak louder than words. I don't look at the report and think whether I agree with it or not based on the language that's used. I look at the action. I'm, I'm sorry, Paul, I think you misunderstood the question. question. Uh, the question wasn't about this report, it was about the couple of guidance, the 2013 guidance, and the outcomes it described for them. And I think you agree with those outcomes, not the outcomes that are in this report. Uh, and, uh, I think that's what I was asking you to describe what those outcomes are and whether you agree with them rather than this report. Thank you, Madam Chair, for that uh, clarification. Perhaps the answer was the question was rather too woolly for me to understand. But in terms of. Got it now, anyway. I, I, I do, Madam Chair. And, and what I, I've just said, by the way, still stands and, and remains my opinion, and I'm sure the committee will take that into account. But in relation to the government's report, um, of course, you know, the government does say that local authorities need to look at a more targeted approach, and it encourages it. But what it doesn't say is that you need to go off on your own and create this targeted what government nationally suggests we need to do is we need to work collaboratively with partners, with our members and staff, and come up with solutions, and I don't think the council can achieve that with this particular review. I think there's a little time
they would have done the We haven't seen the notes. We haven't seen the evidence. Can you provide it? Yeah, I, I did say it was pre-consultation. Yes, the minutes would be available. I mean, what, it was quite expensive for consultation. The number of meetings that were held, and I think, again, I would say that the office would have cleared that in great detail. I'm quite happy with the way it's carried out. Thank you, Chair. So, the end of the year, that um, it's been no review since 2002. Has the expectation of delegated relationship changed between that time and so on? Yeah. I mean, Thank you, thank you, Councillor. Um, can I say that um, in, in 2002, when that legislation was brought about, it was you know, tremendous legislation that was brought about by the Labour government and the um, implementation of um, children's centres and short staff centres and that. I'd just like to recall that about five years ago, that was before, while we still had a Labour government, I actually made a speech in Council saying that, in my opinion, as someone who's worked in this area for a number of years, we needed to actually look at it as an authority because I didn't feel that the outcomes for um, our children in the more disadvantaged areas was as good as it should have been. In fact, I, I, I made that statement in council. When I came into the position in 2012, quite a number of people in various areas, a number of head teachers, actually asked me to meet with them and they, they, they um, indicated that in their opinion the outcomes were not as good as they should be and would I possibly look at it uh, as a review in the future. When we did get in a um, head of talk in service, that was the first thing I, I, I looked at. Can I just give some statistics here? For example, children who are on free school meals in most authorities, and or, or, or authorities with no exception, when they enter school, they are at least 24 to 28 months behind the, 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 the peer group. Now, those children come into disadvantaged areas. I always work on the basis that, you know, as a wise parent, I want the best for all the children in the local authority. And, you know, that, 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 that is what, that is the purpose of the review, to ensure that because of the funding cuts that have been made, I, I mean, I'll repeat this, we've had one third of our funding for, for the early years intervention grant cut. Overall in the country, and we haven't done this, 500, 500 children's centres have closed since 2011. I don't know if you remember, Chair, and the rest of the committee, in 2009, there was a big debate before the general election and the um, Labour Party said the Tory party were going to cut uh, funding for children's services. And it was a big photo opportunity when we saw David Cameron down in the children's centre in Somerset and he was saying, no, we've got children's centres to the hill. There will be no indication of any, uh, uh, any cuts or that. I can tell you that the, the, the for example, 150 million from children's centres from, from early years intervention grant have been moved into the adoption strategy grant. Okay, that, that's fine. But one billion, as I understand it, nearly one billion has been moved into free schools. Now, we know that a, that was a priority of the previous Secretary of State for Education. Fine, but I heard Councillor Hayes saying, oh, it's a priority in early years. If it's a priority for him, could I ask him and his group to go back, to go back to his government and say, look, please, can you just, can you just reintroduce, just reintroduce the money that you have saved, you have, you have cut already from. Just give us back, just put us back in the position and we're in.
of a situation seems to be from my reading of it that decisions have been made as regards to what we intend to do from now on based on that pre-consultation process. And the number of the problems seem to be whether that pre-consultation process is really as thorough and as recorded and as detailed, if you like, as you're suggesting it is, or whether it's not like that at all in the way that Councillor Hayden said. And my concern is that this post pre-consultation process is going to be biased in favour of the pre-consultation process that's already taken place. So I think I'm going to keep my powder dry until I've heard what the witnesses say. Because my concern is not process, it's the validity of the process that's taken place. In other words, pre-consultation is always a good idea. We go into planning, we do a lot of other things in this council that's involved. I'm totally in favour of that. But it appears to me, from listening to what people have said, that there's some great polarised disparity of opinion as to whether that pre-consultation process has been valid or not, and it's been used as the basis for forming policy. And I'm very concerned about that. I would like to hear what the witnesses say to hear whether they believe that the pre-consultation process was as, uh, as robust and as positive as it could have been. And I'm not, in all honesty, trying to get an indication that that's been the case today. And I'd like to hear what the other witnesses want to say. But, but I'm assuming that if there is going to be a six-week consultation process, it will be properly conducted, properly considered, properly recorded, <coughs> and the valid views of end users, staff, and all those involved in making the decision are taken into account, and this isn't sort of railroading through in some austere way, because I don't think that's what this council needs to be involved in, bearing in mind all the problems we've had in the past. But getting back very quickly to the first point, we must establish whether this pre consultation process on which the policy has been based was flawed or was not flawed, and that's the point I think. That's the element of the room, that's the best thing to talk about. Thank you. 